You know, sometimes all investigators need is a small piece of information to crack open an unsolved crime. And with advances in crime technology, it's very possible to solve cases years after a crime has occurred. The Volusia County Sheriff's Office has an investigative unit that's seeking to unravel the mysteries of several cold cases. We'll find out how they do that with our studio guest today, Volusia County Sheriff Investigator Chuck Lee. Chuck, thanks for being with us. How are you doing? Thank you very much. I'm very well. Hey, um, talking about this cold case unit, uh, how long has this unit been in effect, Chuck? It's been in effect probably about a year and a half now. Mm -hmm. a very, uh, I have two uh, volunteers that are former detectives or investigators that used to work for the sheriff's office uh, and myself uh, as the regular investigator and then I have a supervisor, Sergeant Tobin. Mm -hmm. You know, when we say cold cases, uh, is there some sort of a definition of a cold case? I mean, is it has to be open so long or is it unsolved? Or how do you determine what a cold case is? A cold case is, a, is an investigation that where all investigative leads at that time of the in, initial inception of the case has been exhausted. Uh -huh. now, that doesn't mean that the case is closed. It right. just means it's set into a suspended status until an investigative lead comes around where we can actually investigate that lead and see where it leads us. So in other words, uh, you're saying that the case remains open but in in inactive? Is that, well, is that yes, what sir. you'd say? Yes, sir. There's uh, basically three, three things that we do with cases. One is close them. That means the investigation is complete. Uh, it's gone to trial or what have you right. with the case. The second one is, is a clear by exception, which means somebody doesn't want to press charges or the victim is not a true victim, or the person who was the subject of the of the investigation, or the, or um, the victim of the investigation right. passes away. Uh, that's where it's cleared exceptional. Mm -hmm. And then there's a suspended status where the investigative leads have been exhausted. For example, the cold cases that we can bring back and and not reopen them because they've never been closed. They're just coming from a suspended status to an open status, active it. status again. You mentioned you had a couple of volunteers uh, that are helping you out. Uh, my understanding is, is those volunteers, I think, are retired law enforcement officers. And in some cases, the, the, uh, they actually handle the cold cases that you're working on. That's correct. When we initially the established a cold case squad, um, I had two uh, civilian uh, volunteers that came forward and, and they were screened by the sheriff's office in order to become a volunteer. Uh, especially when it comes to homicides, that information we don't want leaked out sure. uh, to the general populace and, and because that makes our job harder when it comes time to interviews and, and interrogations. Mm -hmm. um, they actually did handle the cases and we have 48 uh, open uh, um, cold cases. Uh, what we had to do was go back and take those boxes of cases, photocopy every case, and then send those copies to records where they uploaded them into a new data system. Wow. So that was our first step is organization of the cold case squad. Then after those were recorded in, in the data, uh, computer systems for the sheriff's office, those records came back to us. Now all those are original records, so we have to safeguard those records and that's where we put them into a vault. Now those records did not include photographs, investigators' notes, or any evidence that are that were say we're in the cold case boxes. Right. Uh, it was just records of initial reports that we had to send to records. So that was our first step when we established our cold case squad. Well, when these guys are coming back, uh, actually having worked on these cases, you you may have some of that information that's right up here. Definitely, we have uh, Mr. Henshaw and Mr. Maxwell. Um, both of them retired, right. uh, sheriff's office. Uh, some of these cases, you know, even though I was born in the 60s, they still have recollection of because they actually worked the cases wow. or had knowledge of the cases as a first responder. Mm -hmm. So that knowledge I'm using to our benefit because they know the people who were involved. They know the uh, suspects and the witnesses. Mm -hmm. So we, we know who's our friend and who's our foe. Right. Um, so it's very... Um, very good and very good for me to have those two uh, working with us. Even though these cases, Chuck, are many, many years old, uh, you know, from what I read and, you know, what you watch on TV and whatever, that uh, even a, a very small new clue can oftentimes be the key to unlock the, uh, the, what happened. Very much so. 
anytime we get a lead, uh, whether it's by telephone or by Crime Stoppers, or you know another police officer or a sheriff deputy can can provide us information, that one little clue uh, can open up into a world that we will track and track and track, and you know, and if we have to travel out of state, which we've done several times, right, um, we'll track that lead until it's exhausted or it proves the innocence of a person or the guilt of a person. Right. You mentioned travel out of state. Uh, I would also guess that uh, another law enforcement agency may pick up a clue from a, a totally unrelated incident that may link back to something you're working on and you put the, I guess, the information together. That must happen sometimes. Sometimes it does, especially with uh, the uh, inception of DNA right. uh, from the middle, late 80s until present, the DNA has evolved to where it's a uh, uh, law enforcement friendly. Right. Um, so their cases, for example, I just went to a meeting uh, last week in Alachua County of a serial killer that has been in the state of Florida um, since the 1980s, was transient mm -hmm. uh, and traveled all over the United States and California and Los Angeles, uh, arrested him for three hom cold case homicides in their jurisdiction. Wow. So what we're doing is comparing notes and we know he was in Florida at certain times, and we're looking at our cold case homicides that may link him to that, whether it be we, uh, we have DNA or we don't have DNA, but we can put him in the uh, general vicinity. So that, that lead alone will help us out uh, considerably in our cold case files. And I would imagine that if you're comparing, uh, you know, incidences that, that occurred, let's say, in Los Angeles versus what occurred here, I would think that the motive and the type of crime and the, the circumstances sometimes match up. And you go, ah, that's similar to what we have here. That's very correct. Um, just alone in certain cases, people operate in certain ways when right. they commit a crime especially a homicide, mm -hmm. uh, especially when it comes to sexual type homicides. They act in certain ways. We try right. to link those ways up. That's specific evidence that maybe they bound the hands, bound the feet, um, um, used a knife, used a gun, you right. know, specific shots that they used mm -hmm. in a, with a gun, specific cuts with a, with a, uh, a knife. So we will use that uh, to our benefit. You know, you mentioned DNA, uh, which has, uh, I guess, come on the scene uh, in the last 25, 30 years, or something like that. Um, what you know, technology has has exploded so rapidly in the last 10, 15 years. I would imagine that t today's investigator must have a lot more tools, specific, uh, especially with technology, uh, to help solve some of these cases. You didn't have technology like this 25, <laughs> 30 years ago. No, sir. We had um, back 20, 30 years ago. All we could do is tell you what type of blood you were, right. you know, or O positive, A positive. Right. Uh, with our DNA today, we're able to track your history even if we have a partial or what we call a touch DNA, we can go back and build a profile just on that touch DNA if we don't have a full profile of that individual. Right. So DNA uh, has drastically improved our um, solve rates as far as crime right. across the United States, not just Volusia County, but across the United States. So for citizens out there mm -hmm. that uh, all of a sudden they may have a, a moment of of consciousness or uh, maybe a little guilt or what have you, uh, or maybe that some, they read something somewhere and something registered with them. I mean, what should people do? I mean, should they hesitate to call you or should they uh, be in this kind of a circumstance where if there's any doubt, give you a call? I mean, Any doubt, give us a call. If you have a, uh, any idea of who may have committed a cold case homicide mm -hmm. or any cold case in fact you know we have burglaries we have home invasions any crime don't hesitate to call you can remain anonymous you can go through crime stoppers or you can call our offices and and we will talk to you without taking your name or telephone number and have that information come forward the only way we're going to solve these crimes are with information that the public provides right. us that's one of the reasons I'm here today I also um, or we, I'm sorry, have also uh, taken our cold cases and put them on mass media, right. you know, so we could get that information out to the public and generate the leads that we need to solve these cases. Somebody knows something about every cold case that we have in that cold case vault. 
And all we're asking is for people to come forward with that information. All right, so if they want to come forward, uh, what do they do? Where do they go uh, to get a hold of you, or where do they get information? You may from? call 1-800, I believe it's Crime Stoppers. I don't have the phone with me right now. Or you can call our office directly at area code 386-254-1535 and ask for myself or any investigator in the office, and we'll be glad to take the information from you. And again, you're working on how many cold cases? 48. 48. Are they all murders? Yes, sir. All right. Well, uh, Chuck, I want to thank you for sharing the information uh, with us. Uh, as you say, uh, out there someone's got information and you want to hear from them. Yes, sir. I sure do. Our guest today is Investigator Chuck Lee with the Volusia County Sheriff's Office. And again, if you have any information or want uh, to provide some uh, facts and so forth, all you have to do is call Crime Stoppers.